Hi there, um, I'm now going to talk to you about building models in ArcMap. Um, models are designed to create um, a series of workflows um, which can help you to um, achieve repetitive tasks um, time and time again without having to run through um, a load of um, particular procedures. Um, so we're just going to dive right into creating a, a model. Um, the first thing we need to do um, before we create a model is to create a toolbox um, to hold the model inside. So um, a toolbox again will sit externally outside of a geo database. Um, so I'm just going to put it here inside my GIS folder. Um, and if I right click and I go down to new, I can create a toolbox. I'm just going to accept the default name and now if I right click on the toolbox I now get the option to create a new model. Um, so once we've done that we get this, this model builder um, which starts to pop up um, and the best way to um, explain how this works is to show you. Um, in the example that I'm going to be demonstrating we are going to create a workflow um, to clip some data um, to a particular shape or a particular area and we want to create this as a workflow that we can use time and time again to clip different sets of data um, so we have to go through various processes um, to edit the um, model so that we can we can use it to do that um, the first thing with any model is we need to decide on the data that we're going to um, to manipulate um, and this is any kind of GIS data so it could be vector or raster data um, so we have the option up here to add data, so I'm going to first of all add some data. Now in this example we're going to be clipping some data to a specific area that we've already kind of predefined. So I'm going to add that um, as my first part of the model. Um, we also need to add some data that's going to be clipped, so I need to go and add some data that's going to be clipped um, just to get the model up and running and then we're going to go back and edit the model um, and tweak the parameters to make it act in a slightly different way um, as we go through this example. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go into my original data and I'm going to grab the ancient woodland data. So we've now got our two pieces of data in there and we now need to choose the tool that is actually going to do the manipulation of this, this data. Um, in this example we know that we want to clip the data, the woodland data, or any kind of data um, to this particular study area. Um, so the easiest way to access um, or find a tool is to go up here to the search function and then I can start typing um, in the name of the potential tool. So I know this one's called clip um, and then I hit return and it should give me all the possible clip tools. Um, so I know that I need this particular tool here. So again I just simply click it and drag it over into the work flow um, in the model builder. At the moment there's no connection between these things um, so we now need to make the connection um, and make this model work. Um, so the easiest way to that is to double click on, on the clip data tool and again we can just double check here that we've got the right tool that we need and we have um, and again so I'm just going to fill in these boxes so the input data is the feature to be clipped and in this example it is the ancient woodland layer and now I need to choose the feature that's going to be clipped or the input feature which again is in this case is the study area um, and then I need to simply put an output um, feature class and again I'm going to put that back into my geo database as well um, in this example so I'm just going to navigate to my geo database and I'm going to pop it in there and I'm going to give it a name so it's going to be woodland clip then simply save that and I'm going to hit OK. So now you notice that the, um, the model has changed 
um, we have these arrows which connect so we've got two inputs so we've got the study area which is the clipping area and then we've got the data to be clipped and then we've got the process in the middle here which is the clip and then we've got an output which is the um, feature class or the clipped output so if we now run that model it would actually basically run through that process and clip the data automatically for us um, we want to change this um, so that this model will be able to clip any data that we decide um, to run it through so we need to we need to make some alterations um, there's several alterations we need to make um, and the most well the alterations we need to make are to the input and then to the output um, the study area will always stay the same because that's the area we want to clip all our data to so um, a couple of things we need to do um, we need to double click this and then we need to remove um, this file path and simply click OK and you'll now notice that this has gone white um, because we don't have a specific input and I need, now need to right click on here and I need to add a model perimeter or par, param, yeah, perimeter um, and that will um, allow us to choose the type of data that we want to run through the clip model um, and again I'm going to add another model parameter here um, and that will also give us the option to change the file name that becomes saved so again I need to remove this from here and click OK. The last thing I need to do is I need to rename or I need to, to, to relabel, yeah sorry rename uh, these just to make them a little bit more meaningful when the tool runs um, so I'm going to call that data to be clipped to be clipped and and then again I'm going to rename this one here final clipped output and then I'm going to click OK um, I'm now going to save this model and I'm going to close the model window and so if we want to access that model and run it on some data I simply go to my catalogue and there we go I can see the model that I've just created sitting under my toolbox so if I double click on it um, I get the little window appear um, so it gives me an option to choose some data to be clipped and then it gives me the option to create a file name um, for the output to be clipped um, so I'm just going to sit and run, run the tool so I'm going to instead of choosing ancient wood I'm going to choose a different set of data this time um, I'm going to choose triple SIs and then I'm going to put them output them back into my geo database uh, uh, SSI save that and I'm going to now run the model and then we should get the model running and it's completed the task and it's added the data to our layers so if we want to just double check that it's done the correct thing we can drag the study area back into our window and if I symbolize that as hollow and I can now zoom to the layer we can see that it's clipped out the triple SIs that are within our particular study area um, there's a couple of enhancements we can do to the um, to the model so I'm just going to go back and again I'm going to right click on the model here in the toolbox and I'm going to go down to the item description <coughs> and we can just tweak some of this information in here so we can change the title give it something more meaningful study area and then we can also add some useful information so we can put a description here a summary of what the tool does um, this tool 
fill clip data to the wind um, study area and then we can just go down here and put some more detail for the specific um, input and output so just a little bit of guidance for somebody who might be using the tool choose some data to be clipped I might put to some vector data to be clipped and then I'm going to put again so the output here I'm going to say choose a file name and geo database to store your clipped data and once I'm done I can save that and then I can just close that window down and now if we run the tool again so if we go back to the toolbox and run it again uh, we should have a little bit more information here so we've got this tool um, tells me a little bit about the tool and again if I clip click on on the um, the two boxes it tells me they choose some vector data to be clipped and then I click on here it says choose a file name so that just makes the tool a little bit more useful and of course these tools are designed to be um, shared with other people and um, emailed or sent around and they're easily transportable um, and shareable with other people using this system and of course that's just a, a very simple example of, of what you can do with the models there's obviously a lot more you potentially can do um, using all the different tools that are already built into Arc Map um, by putting them together in a series of workflows as we've just described